What I don't like is Dana White caping for the fact that he said that he made the comments and like comically like made fun of Cyborg's physique because she looked like quote unquote Vanderlei Silva. Now he brought up her drug test. That that happened. She failed a drug test. Making fun of somebody's appearance? Nah. I don't I don't get that. You could just say she looks like she's on PEDs. Just say that. Yep. To then cape for what you said, that's dumb. However, Joe, there was a wrinkle here because after all that happened, after Dana White came out and said what was on that video that Cyborg posted wasn't it, Chris Cyborg came out and apologized, yeah. saying he's right. It was edited together by my production team to make him look bad. I apologize for that. Joe, I want your thoughts first on all this. There's a whole lot to get into. I, I can sum it up very quickly in just that it's the whole being in business with Cyborg and Cyborg being in business with the UFC has always been a debacle. I don't know if Dana White from way back, uh, you know, before Strike Force or Elite XC or whatever it was, has had this bone to pick uh, with Cyborg and or her people. It's just been carried on over and over and over again, month after month, year after year. Uh, it's like they, he couldn't maximize what he – just my opinion, but I don't think he could have – the UFC could have maximized the revenue they thought they could have generated by signing somebody like Cyborg that it's just bitterness. It's just bitterness towards her uh, and vice versa. She doesn't want to take anything that he says, and there's so much – uh, broken telephone, miscommunication, different things that come in and out from both camps, whether in person, whether on social media, that it's, it's, it's a, a, a reality show that's on social media. That's all it really is. I've said for months, if not years, Joe, that whoever runs social media for Cyborg, whoever handles that end, whoever handles the management end, I don't want to name names because I don't know the guy, even though he blocked me on Twitter <laughs> and would try to refute all this stuff. That person does not truly... If, if they have Cyborg's best interest at mind, then they're dumb. And they don't know business. Because all the things that I've heard, th this stuff, chopping up your boss's footage to make him look like shit to gain sympathy, when you know they got cameras backstage, that's dumb. Hooking your social media up to a bunch of spam sites? That's dumb and makes you lose credibility. There are going to be people that cape for no matter what. Showing up at the Performance Center, WWE's Performance Center, unannounced? That's dumb. Running a story on your social media when you're trying to leverage WWE against UFC and having the balls to publish a story that says, Oh, Ronda Rousey refuses to re-sign with WWE if they uh, negotiate with Cyborg. Eh, wrong. She's under a three-year deal. Everybody knows she's under a three-year deal. Reached out to WWE, categorically false. Shot that shit down. Ain't hard to get a comment. Why would you do that? It's dumb. Going and asking for these cake fights so you can forever have the what-if thing? Cyborg doesn't need that. She's talented. She's very good. Trust in your fighter. All this talk about brand building. Beating Pam Sorensen doesn't build your brand. It builds a brand of what if? What if? What if? Get rid of that what if shit. If you want to wrestle, go wrestle. If you want to beat up cans, do it. But leave Cyborg, let Cyborg do it, goddammit. Don't sit there and put all this trash on her social media that's, that the people that are smart enough can see through. The editing of the footage, the posting the spam links, the posting outright fake fucking stories. It's stupid. Cyborg is one of the most talented female fighters of all time. She does not need that shit. She does not need the cyborg versus the authority thing. She doesn't need it. Everybody knows that it's her versus the authority. Everybody knows that somewhat begrudgingly she was hired. However, they did also pay her when she was Invicta. In Invicta. They did that. They did 
Also, I believe, pay for a nutritionist when she declared that she wanted to go to 135 and never did it. That was a thing that happened. Yeah. They did want to book her in the Staples Center against Ronda Rousey. Her, her management, whoever the hell it was at that time, wanted more money. Understandable. That was a big fight. I'm not going to fault them for that. But... All these things that are out there about Cyborg and how, how she's been wronged. Yeah, she's been wronged quite a bit, but she's done her fair share of wronging too. The making fun of her appearance and, and like like miming that, that's stupid shit. That's such dumb, inexcusable, ridiculous shit. And it, it's clear that Dana hasn't grown from that, which bothers me. But like... Hey, Cyborg is well within her rights to go make six figures somewhere to punch somebody and watch them fall over. And I support her her ability to do that. But man, there's a lot of blame to be thrown around on both sides here. And the sooner that relationship ends, the better for me because I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of, of, of all that. And it almost none of it is from Cyborg herself. Almost none of it is from herself. It's her management and Dana White. Hot damn, there we go. It's almost like you want to say we want the relationship to get better, but no, nah, end it. Just yeah, for all, just let it go. There, there, With Ray LB and Dana White, it ain't happening. Yeah, and yeah. and the thing is, it's perpetuated as if it's Cyborg and the UFC. It's not. It's it's. It seems like it's Ray LB and Dana White, but you yeah. never hear those two mention each other's names. Ever. 